Hey, Ashley, how could you do that? The one most important thing in my life, and you'll use it to trick me. Well, this is just wonderful. I really appreciate the trust you have in me, Justin. All Miss Rena has to do is come marching in here and tell you some story, and you accept it as gospel? That makes me feel real good. You haven't denied anything. Well, accuse me, Justin. Go ahead. Are you pregnant? Yes, I am. I didn't figure you'd believe me. So I brought the test reports and the medical reports with me. Sorry. I'm sorry. So am I. Please, Ashley, forgive me. Please. Not a chance. Elliot. What is it, Paige? What if it were Dennis? Don't even think such a no, thing. No, but Elliot, you know how unpredictable Paige, he's Paige, that been... was before he started seeing the psychiatrist. Now he's past all that now. But I... Paige, no. Dennis simply wouldn't do a thing like this. If you ask me, it sounds like the work of Peter Parnell. Photograph very well, Paige. Uh, Steve, don't put those chairs in the center. Move them on over to the side. I thought Ryan said I was in charge. Well, you are. But we have to leave more room in the center for an aisle. Hey, I thought we hired caterers to handle this affair. Oh, well, we did. They'll be here in half an hour. Looks to me like there's not going to be much left for them to do. Well, if you want something done right, I've always said you have to do it yourself. Well, I don't want you getting tired before the ceremony. <laughs> oh, Ryan, the tent is just lovely. And you couldn't ask for better weather. Hey, there, you're looking pretty fit for a steer that's about to get branded. <laughs> hey, buddy! <laughs> I brought the tablecloth. Jenny wanted to bring it, but I wouldn't let her. I wished her all the happiness in the world. I want to wish you the same. Oh, uh, thank you, Lillian. Mm -hmm. Well... It looks as if it's finally going to happen. You know, I was about to think you and Ginny never were going to get married. Well, I was beginning to think that, too. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you are. You know, I've never seen Ginny look so happy. Hello, Ginny. What are you doing here? I want you to call off the wedding. Put me down! What are you doing? You and I are going to talk. Oh, no, we're not. I've had enough talk from you today. Open up that door, please. I told you, Ashley. I told you I was sorry. Sorry? Until when? Until the next time that Miss Rena comes in here with some kind of story about me? I don't know why I believed her. I do. Because you trust her and you don't trust me. You don't love me! How can you say that? Oh, yeah, you want a child. And you think I'll make a fine mother, but that's as far as it goes. That's not true. You know how much I love you. <gasps> well, yeah, well, you tell me that from time to time. And from time to time, I even believe you. Maybe even sometimes it's true. I don't know. But it's not enough. You couldn't have Rena, so you married me and had a baby instead. No. Justin, please. For once in your life, be honest with me and with yourself. All right. I won't deny I want the child. I want a son, an heir. It's very important to me. But so are you very important to me. Not in the same way Rena is. Would you forget about Rena? Oh, God, I wish I could. But I can't. She's a part of our lives, Justin, and we're going to have to deal with that. We're going to have to deal with the fact that you have feelings for her and that she's out to destroy you. I don't have any feelings for Rena. She can't destroy me, so we don't have to deal with her.
Do you want to file for the divorce, or shall I? I'm sorry, but I'm not going to spend my whole life trying to compete with Rena for your affection. After the baby's born, we'll talk about visiting rights. Ashley? Ashley? I need you. I need our child. I don't want Raina. You have to believe that. I love you. I want to care for you for the rest of your life. I promise I'll do my best to make you happy. Oh, please. It just doesn't make any sense. With a man like Parnell, does it have to make sense? Yes, it does. Peter's done some terrible things, but he always had a reason. Oh, I don't know about that. Bringing Jack Brent to the top of the World Club to embarrass you, there was nothing reasonable about there that. There was, don't you see? Peter's whole purpose in doing that was to separate us. He thought you would be so disgusted by my past that you'd run out on me, and he wanted me. And that was his way of, way of dealing with it. But this, this is different. I mean, what could he possibly have to gain by sticking those photos underneath my door? I mean, that's a question only Parnell can answer, if he's the one who put them there. Maybe I should talk to him. You really want to do that? No. But I have to find out who's responsible. Well, what if Parnell refuses to see you? Then I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, there's something I can do. What? I'll call the district attorney and see if the film and the photographs are still in his possession. If they've been stolen, that might give us some sort of lead. Elliot, I'm sorry I thought of Dennis. I'm sure now that the divorce is final that he wants to put the past behind him as much as I do. I agree. But I think I'll have a little talk with Dennis anyway. Just to be sure. I read about your wedding in the Chronicle last night. I have all the Houston papers sent to me in Colorado. Grandma usually calls and keeps me posted on all the news around here. She never mentioned the wedding. Why is that, Jenny? Because I asked her not to. Why? Because it's none of your business. Of course it's my business. I love you. You're my wife. I am not your wife. Not anymore, Barrett. Our life together is over. It has been for a very long time. Now try to accept that. Just go back to Colorado. I'm not leaving. You're not welcome here. Of course I'm welcome. This is my home. Our home. Yours and mine and Steve's. You sold out your shares of the ranch to Justin, remember? So he could drill for oil. Justin promised me that he'd run Ryan out of town. He promised me that I could have you back. Well, you're a fool to believe Justin because he couldn't keep that promise. Ginny. Baron, if you've come here to upset me, you certainly have succeeded. Would you please leave now? I'm not going to allow this wedding to take place. I didn't live through five long years of hell to have my wife and son stolen away by Ryan Connor. Now he poisoned your mind. You me. are the one who destroyed our love, not Ryan. I did everything in my power to make this marriage work. And you teared it apart bit by bit. There is no way that I'm ever going to love you again. Please. Please don't make me hate you. You do hate me, don't you? You won't let me see my son. I want Stephen to be a part of your life. Just the way you're a part of his. But you're not ready yet. Steve is too young to understand your moods and your anger. You only destroy his love, Barrett, and I won't let that happen. Not to you or to Stephen. Steve is all I have left. Then go back to Colorado and get the help you need. Then you can hold on to him. <laughs> I'm in a rush. I told Jenny that I would meet her at the ranch at two. Well, your little stunt almost worked. Almost, but not quite. 
How did you ever get a reputable doctor to say you were pregnant? You weren't pregnant, Ashley. I am pregnant. Surprised? Iris will be. I'm sure she will be. So have you and Justin kissed and made up for now? That's right. And I want you to leave us alone. Oh, my. Motherhood brings out the tiger in you, doesn't it? Well, I learned a valuable lesson today from you and Iris Wheeler. Never trust anybody. I told you that long ago. Don't trust Justin. That's right. You did. But I love him. And I intend to keep him. Well, you're welcome to have him. Uh, until I give him what he deserves. But you may not want him by then. Give up, Rena. Never. There's no way you can win. So why don't you just save yourself the trouble? You got lucky this time, Ashley, but your luck won't hold up forever. In fact, I think Justin is running out of luck already. He doesn't have the mineral rights to the ranch. He isn't president of World Oil any longer. And after I have my little talk with Iris, he won't even be with the company. So I sure hope you've been saving your little pennies, sweetheart, for a rainy day because you're going to run smack in the middle of a hurricane. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a helicopter waiting. I intend to ride out the storm, Rena. Don't plan on Justin riding it out with you. I think he will. But if he doesn't, at least I'll have a child. sure you'd see me. Why not? You're a lot more attractive than that sour little lawyer I've been looking at for the past several days. <clears throat> Peter, I'm sorry about the way everything's turned out. Are you really? Yes, I am. I find that very comforting. Especially since you're probably the reason I'm in here. I take it it was Elena Decker who brought you Joe's confession. Yes. So what uh, happens to Joe Foster now? I don't know, Paige. And as the line goes, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. How did it happen, Peter? How did you get involved in selling drugs? Surely you know the answer to that one. Money. A great deal of money. Jim Lawrence promised to make me a millionaire within a year. After all the francs and beans that you and I had shared out on the coast, I couldn't bring myself to say no. You didn't think about all the people who could get hurt? <laughs> well, you don't expect me to shed a lot of tears over Chris Shaw and Bernie Stokes. There were a couple of two-bit hustlers. They got what they deserved. Bernie hadn't tried to grab the money and run. None of us would be in this mess. But Chris, Peter. You knew Chris. Chris was your friend. Chris was nobody's friend, Paige. I don't know that better than anybody else. This is nothing but a greedy little shark who was trying to play both ends against the middle. He got caught in the squeeze. Paper says you killed Bernie Stokes. That's right. Everyone thought it was Joe Foster who killed him. Well, that's what I wanted him to think. What's the matter, you little squeamish? I just thought I knew you. Well, I guess you didn't. How can you stand 
there and talk about killing someone. Oh, come on, Paige. Now, don't get righteous with me. I've known you far too long for that. And surely you didn't come in here expecting me to find, to find me writhing about on the floor, consumed with guilt. I don't really know what I expected. I just... What are you doing here? I mean, I'm not so foolish as to think that this is an errand of mercy on your part. No, actually, I did come to ask you a question. What question? Well, I'm opening a fashion boutique at the Galleria. And I was there this morning. Someone slipped an envelope full of photographs underneath my door. What sort of photographs? Publicity stills. From the film that I made with Chris. <laughs> More from your little venture into the world of pornographic films, huh? Are you responsible for that little delivery, Peter? No, Paige, I'm not. But I can tell you who is. Ryan Connor will turn Steve against me. Ryan knows how much Steve loves you, how important you are to him. Ryan's not interested in taking your place. All he wants to do is make Stephen happy. Does Ryan make you happy? Yes, he does. I made you happy once, too, didn't I? Yes, you did. All right. I'll go. I'll be in touch with Grandma. <laughs> Honey, do you know where the string is? Uh, Kate's tying up some flowers. <laughs> Jenny, what's the matter? What's the matter? <laughs> When? Just now. Why? What did he want? He, he read about our wedding in the paper and he came to stop it. Where is he, huh? He's gone. Okay, I'm, I'm going to make sure. I'm going to have Harley check with the highway patrol. No, gonna... Ryan! No, he won't be back, I'm sure. <laughs> From what you've told me, I could practically guarantee you that your darling Dennis was responsible for slipping those stills under your door. I don't think so, Peter. Why not? You don't think your beloved ex-husband is capable of a thing like that? No, I don't. <laughs> then I'm afraid you don't know him any better than you know me. Beneath that boyish exterior, your darling Dennis is capable of some pretty nasty actions. Where would Dennis have gotten the photographs in the first place? Every copy is being held as evidence. Well, if it meant his breaking into the DA's office and stealing them, then I don't think Dennis could have pulled it off. He hasn't got the guts for that sort of thing. <laughs> You okay? Yes, I'm, I'm fine. Sorry I wasn't with you. I'm glad you weren't with me, but it turned into a free-for-all. I should have gone after him. I would have wrapped him around the nearest tree. Ryan. <sighs> I'm sorry. I just wanted the day to be so happy. Well, it will be now. 
is coming to our wedding in a helicopter. Well, now, there then, that's just got to be Rena, right? <laughs> I hope she doesn't blow the tent over at that thing. Why does she just drive out here like everybody else? Well, she told me she had a thousand things to do in town, and she well, just really? didn't want to be late. <laughs> I love you. Well, I guess uh, we better go get ready for the ceremony, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Vicky! Hello, Hi, Vicky! Hi, Hi, TJ. Hello. We saw the tent and it's lovely. Oh, good. Where's Stryker? He had to be in court this morning, but don't worry. He'll be here in plenty of time to give you away. Where's Rena? Here she comes now! <sighs> You're not supposed to see the bride before the wedding. Well, I guess it's too late. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, just oh. fine. Oh. <laughs> well, where do you think the photos came from? I mean, the district attorney had the only copies. Yes, he does. I just came from his office. All of the evidence from your trial is still in his files. Well, if that's the case... Dennis, then what... the night you spoke to Chris Shaw, did he mention the existence of any copies of the film or the publicity stills? No. As a matter of fact, when he was blackmailing Mom, he, s he assured her that he had the only print. Yeah, but his word wasn't worth much. He's obviously lying. Yes, but as far as you know personally, there aren't any copies of the film. Mm -hmm. If there are, I haven't seen them. I imagine all this is very upsetting to Paige. Very. But you can hardly blame her. No. Although she did bring it on herself, I... I still hate to see her go through all of this. The thing that baffles me is what motive there could be. Dad, it was obviously the work of a very sick person. Yes, but who? Someone from Paige's past? Hmm. Well, Dennis, I'm sorry to have bothered you. Yeah, I'm sorry I couldn't have been more help, Dad, but uh, if I think of anything, I'll let you know. Okay. I'll probably see you later at the office. Right. So long. I already know what you're going to say. We'll always be friends, won't we? Forever. <laughs> you better do me a favor and not cry at the <laughs> ceremony. I'll wring your neck. I mean it. No, it's already. Oh, I can't believe it. Hello, Jenny. Hi. Jenny. I couldn't be more proud today. I appreciate you asking me to stand in for your father. Stryker, you and Rena and Vicky are just like a second family to me. I have a little gift for you. Oh, Stryker. <gasps> It's beautiful. Wear it in good health oh, and happiness. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. You help you? Oh, yes. Great. Okay. You got it? I got it. I think so. Well, Kate. Oh, you, <laughs> you look pretty enough to be a bride yourself today. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Hi, Father Bascom. Well, hello, young man. Where's the ring? Ryan still has. I don't know where he is. Oh, here he comes now. I think weddings are so beautiful. They always make me cry. Well, listen, you're going to go some to match Wanda. I always bring some extra tissues. Mother here cries happy better than anyone in this county. Oh, isn't he the handsomest man? Oh. TJ, I want you to meet my best man. It's quite an honor to be a best man. Yeah, I guess. You're not nervous, are you, honey? No, ma'am. I need the ring, though. Oh, well, I almost forgot it. <laughs> okay, here you go, cowboy. Well, I guess I'm ready, then. Listen, is, uh, is Stryker here? Yes, he just arrived. He went up to get Jenny. <sighs> well, I guess we uh, better get to our places, huh? Come on.
Mrs. Wheeler, may I talk to you? I called your office several times. Becky said you weren't in. Now, I didn't know whether you were avoiding me or... No, no, I really wasn't there. I wanted to apologize, Ashley. I'd like to try and make up for the terrible mistake I made. But I, I never intended to tell anyone our secret. I don't know how it happened, but I, I am truly sorry. Now, if there was some way that I could make it up to you... Oh, did Rena tell Justin you lied about being pregnant? Oh, yes, she did. <sighs> but that really doesn't matter anymore. Because I am pregnant. You are? <laughs> Isn't that something? <laughs> I am so happy for you. Oh, we will have a wonderful time shopping for the nursery. Well, what's wrong? I knew the whole time that, uh, that Justin married me because of the child. Not because he loved me. But I'm willing to live with that. Justin does love you. At least as much as he will ever love anyone, even Rena. Maybe. Rena's out to destroy Justin. Yes, I know. Mrs. Wheeler, I need your help. There's not any way that Justin and I can fight her all alone. Well, Rena's going through a difficult time now. I understand because I've been through it myself. Perhaps I can be of help to all of you. You know, you, you seem a little different somehow, changed. Well, I'm going to be a mama. That changes people, doesn't it? Yes, but that's not it. You should be happy, but you're not. I've gone through a lot today. You've lost your trust in me, haven't you? Yes, I have. Oh, sweetheart. I made a terrible mistake. And I know it hurt you deeply. But you must believe that I care about you, Ashley. I'll never betray you again. I promise you that. And if you could give me another chance to earn your trust, I would be very, very grateful. Thank you. Thank you for forgiving me. Oh, I, uh, I went shopping today. This is for you. Just... I know, I know, I shouldn't have. But, uh, I wanted to start fresh, Ashley. What better way than with diamonds? Well, they say they're a girl's best friend. Ashley, I want to be your best friend. I want to be your husband. Your lover. Your best friend. And the father of my child. And the father of our child. Here's to a new beginning. Ryan, wilt thou have this woman to thy wedded wife? To live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony. Wilt thou love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto her, so long as ye both shall live? I will. Virginia? But thou have this man to thy wedded husband, to live after God's ordinance and the holy estate of matrimony. Wilt thou love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto him, so long as ye both shall live? I will. Who giveth this woman to be married to this man?
Ryan, please repeat after me. I, Ryan, take thee, Virginia, to my wedded wife. I, Ryan, take thee, Virginia, to my wedded wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. To love and to cherish till death do us part. According to God's holy ordinance, and thereto I plight thee my troth. To love and to cherish till death do us part. According to God's holy ordinance, and thereto I plight thee my troth. Now, Virginia, repeat after me. I, Virginia, take thee, Ryan, to my wedded husband. I, Virginia, take thee, Ryan, to my wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. Have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. To love and to cherish till death do us part, according to God's holy ordinance, and thereto I plight thee my troth. To love and to cherish till death do us part, according to God's holy ordinance, and thereto I plight thee my troth. The rings. Bless, O oh Lord, these rings, that they who give them and they who wear them may abide in thy peace and continue in thy favor until their life's end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. With his ring, I thee wed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. With his ring, I thee wed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. you'd learn something from the district attorney. That's why I thought you were gone so long. No, I made another stop on the way back. I went by to talk to Dennis. What did he say? Very little. He was concerned that someone was harassing you. Genuinely concerned. You didn't accuse him, Elliot. You didn't tell him that no, I thought... No, that... of course not. I just, I just asked if Chris Shaw had mentioned the existence of any copies of the film. And... Well, he said that Chris Shaw assured him that that was the only print. I don't understand this, Elliot. Why is someone doing this to me? I'm sorry, Paige, but at the moment I just don't have an answer for that. What if Nita had opened up that envelope? What if a workman had opened it? Paige. Please, let's try to be optimistic about this, huh? Now, as far as we know, we have the only copies of these photographs. And the only copy of the film is on, on file at the district attorney's office. This is what I deserve, Elliot. This is what I get for being a fool. Paige, there's no point in casting yourself over How could I have been so something? naive? How could I have let Peter talk me into making that film? You were in love, Paige. Oh, I wasn't love with it. Wasn't love with Peter. It was... I don't know, it was like I was hypnotized. I would have done anything. So, no, it isn't. This mistake is real, is now. It's going to haunt me for the rest of my life. Everywhere I go, I will live in fear of someone finding out about that Paige, film. Paige, please don't do this. Maybe it's someone who's trying to keep me from opening up the boutique. Well, why would anyone do that? Someone who wants me out of use. Could it be Iris? <gasps> no. Iris has done some pretty desperate things in the time I've known her, but I don't think even Iris would stoop to something this low. In fact, I rather think she'd go a long way to avoid this sort of thing. That special delivery was just a taste of what's to come. Paige! 
With Mom's help, I'm going to make you Houston's biggest celebrity. You may rise and kiss the bride. your mommy wouldn't mind if you took off that tie now. Mm -hmm. I hate ties. I know. So did Max. What would you say if I came out here while your mama and Ryan were on their honeymoon and I took you horseback riding? Hmm? Okay. Hey. Want to tell me what's wrong? I don't want to move into town. Don't you want to live with your mama? Not in town. Well, she can't stay here, honey. Uncle Justin and Ashley are staying out here. You know that. I know. Look, Uncle Justin won't be able to drill for oil out here. Maybe he'll just get bored and move back into town. Hmm? If he does, can Mom come back here to live? Yep. <laughs> you really think that's going to happen? Anything's possible. It's worth wishing for, isn't it? I guess so. Hey, where's your camera? Aren't you going to take pictures? Oh, yeah, that's right. Mm. I left it up. In well, house. you better go and get it. Okay. Hurry up. I'll miss you. So we're going to be staying at the Bellman's in Acapulco and have a pool there and lots of privacy. Mm. <laughs> Who is that handsome man over there? <laughs> That's T.J. Canfield. He works for my father. T.J., are you happy to be back in Houston again? Yes, I think so. Happy enough to stay? Well, that all depends on Stryker. Kate, you make a marvelous hostess. <laughs> You know, I, I have to leave early. I have to be in Washington first thing in the morning. So I'm going to kiss the bride goodbye. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, thank you, Stryker. Good luck, Jenny. Oh, Stryker, thank you so much. I have to take off, but I wish you both the best of everything. Well, Vicky explained it to us, so we understand. Can't you wait until they cut the cake, Daddy? Oh, yes, Stryker, please. We'll cut it now. Where's Stephen? Oh, he went to the house to get his camera. He'll be back in a minute. Dad! Hello, son. Dad, what are you doing here? Aren't you glad to see me? I missed you, son. I missed, missed you very much. I missed you too, Dad. Now, let me look at you. Well, I don't believe you've changed all that much. I grew a little. Yeah. You know, last time I was here, when Max died, uh, you were away at camp. I know. Mom got Ryan married to Ryan this afternoon. Yes, I know. When I come back from the honeymoon, I'm going to have to go live with them in Houston. Would you rather come live with me? 
Well, I don't think Mom will let me. Oh, no, that's where you're wrong. Your mother wouldn't mind a bit. In fact, it's what she wants. She wrote a letter to me this week. I think you should read it. Good show, Billy Joe. Well, yeah, well, thanks. Well, you were good, too. I still wanted to go to your head. I liked your song tonight. Thank you. That ought to light a few flames in the hearts of the women of America. <laughs> Lacey. Lacey. Ricky. Uh, Lacey, do you think you could stay late tonight? Well, sure. I've stayed late every night this week. Any special reason? I, I need you to do a favor for me. What's that? Well, um, there's been a, a little shake-up here on the show, and I need you to keep Billy Joe here at the studio for another couple of hours. Well, what's the reason? I, I can't tell you right now, but whatever you tell Billy Joe to keep him here, yeah. make sure that Phil Roberts doesn't hear you. Hey, Roy. Hey, Billy Joe's still at KBIK? I reckon... Well, tell him I'm in the office when he gets here, okay? Right. Oh, Ruby, look, uh, somebody was trying to reach you earlier this afternoon. Oh, yeah? Who? Uh, some guy wouldn't leave his name. He's long distance. From Nashville. From where? Nashville. I'm just thinking that it might end up like that. If anything goes wrong today. Hello, Mrs. Connor. I've been waiting a long time to be called Mrs. Connor. Are you sure you don't want to be called uh, Hampton Marshall Connor in the more modern tradition? No, just an old-fashioned girl. Mrs. Connor will be just fine. Oh, <laughs> Father Bascom. I want to thank you again for uh, performing the ceremony. It was beautiful. It sure was. Thank you so much. It was lovely. It was my pleasure, I assure you. <laughs> well, TJ, uh, Father Bascom, I'd like you to meet a friend of mine, TJ Canfield. We just met a few minutes ago. You're an associate of Stryker's, aren't you? Yes, I am. It's a shame that Stryker had to leave so early. Oh, don't worry about him. He made me promise him and I'd save him some of that wedding cake. <laughs> well, if Steve would just come down from the house, then we could cut the cake. Hey. I'd like you to come live with me. I don't think my mom would like that. I know she won't mind. It's what she wants. How do you know that? Here. Read this letter that she wrote to me last week. I'm sorry. But you have to know, son. It's not true. I wish it weren't true, Steve. Believe me, I do. But you know your mother's handwriting, that's her signature. Ryan and I are planning children of our own, and there just won't be room enough in our lives for Steve. He'll be much better off with you, Baron. What kind of shake-up Bill is talking about? I don't know, but I'm going to head on over to the coop before the bomb goes off. I thought you were singing in the Top of the World Club tonight. Yeah, I am, but I've got a little business to take care of with Ruby first. How are your flying lessons going? Oh, they're going great. Hey, that's Sammy. He's a terrific coach. Thanks. I owe you one for that introduction. Well, how many hours have you logged? Well, I got about 20. In fact, next week or in a couple of weeks, I hope to have my uh, pilot's license. And I'm still waiting for that trip to New Orleans. What trip to New Orleans? <laughs> I figured you'd forgotten. Oh, the dinner. Yes, the dinner. You were going to fly me down there in your father's plane, remember? 
course, uh, if you're backing off, that's Well, a... I'm not backing off. It's just a little difficult to go to New Orleans for dinner when I'm working here 12 hours a day. <sighs> yeah, that's what you wanted, isn't it? Mm. I must say, I learn something new every day. Wow. You have to be really dedicated in this business. Well, maybe you could become a performer. What makes you say that? Well... I do an hour show three times a night. I rehearse maybe 20 hours a week. It's a very different lifestyle. I'll keep that in mind. Speaking of performers, how's your sister Elena doing? Well, she's all right. Read in the paper that she was mixed up with that Joe Foster guy that kidnapped her. Is that true? Yeah, I'm afraid it is. I only saw her a couple of times at the coop, but she seems so quiet. It's just hard to believe that she'd be mixed up with a guy like that. I know. It's really sort of wild. Yeah, I'll say it's wild. Hi. Hey. Did you sleep well? Yeah. What time is it? I'm not sure. It must be close to five. Whew. The last thing I remember was about lunchtime. <clears throat> Been here the whole time? No, not totally. I went and took a little walk in the hospital gardens. Mm. Offer to go with you next time, but I think the guards would like me going past the door. <laughs> <laughs> Are you all right? Yeah. Are you sure? Are you in pain? I could call the nurse. No, no, no. I'm okay. I'm okay, really. Hey, Dr. Douglas says you're doing great. Yeah. I guess I'm doing okay for a guy who's got a hole in his chest. Guess I'd be lucky that Arnell didn't hit anything important. I talked to a couple of lawyers today. What lawyers? About handling your case. You gotta have one, Joe. I mean, I can't afford no lawyer. I've already taken care of that. What do you, what do you mean you're taking care of that? I'm gonna use the money that we were gonna use to get out of the country with. Oh, Elaine, you can't do that. I already have. Ten thousand dollars you said you borrowed from your aunt. I know. I'll pay her back. I've already discussed it with Aunt Maggie. I don't want you discussing things with your Aunt Maggie. I don't want you spending your money on me. It's my problem, and I gotta solve it by myself. Joe, it's too late. I've already made up my mind. Well, what, what you gonna live on? You don't even have a job. Well, I'm gonna go back to the coop tonight and get my old singing job back. Oh, look, you already talked to Billy Joe once. What makes you think it's gonna be different this time? Because I'm not gonna talk to Billy Joe. This time, I'm going to talk to Ruby. Well, are you sure this guy who was trying to call me didn't leave his name? Yeah, I'm sure. Well, did it sound like he knew me? Yeah, it did. Well, are you sure he didn't say where he could be reached? Ruby, look, I'm sure. Well, how long ago did he call? About three, four hours ago. Well, did you ask him where he could be reached? Yeah, I did, but he wouldn't say. I love you. I know how much it hurts. But it's something you'll just have to accept. I know my mom loves me. Yeah, but not as much as she loves Ryan. Or the children that she and Ryan are going to have. I was Ryan's best man. You were? Yep. He probably asked you to make you feel important. He did. I was his third choice. His third choice. After Max and Grant Wheeler. I'm afraid that's the way it'll 
always be for you with Ryan and your mother. You'll always be third choice. Why didn't Mom tell me herself? She was too busy with wedding plans, and plans for the honeymoon. They invited me out for a week in Acapulco. But you said that you couldn't miss your basketball, right? How do you know that? I know how important the basketball season is to you. So does your mother. She knew that you wouldn't leave Houston. I don't want to leave the ranch. But you have to leave anyway. Now, either you live in town, or you go with me. If you go with me, I'll find a job on a ranch out west. And we can have your horses and morning glory shipped out to stay with us. Can we? Once we get settled. I'm offering you an opportunity to be happy, son. But it's up to you. It's your decision. I'm surprised you got the nerve to show your face around here again. Actually, I'm surprised you got the nerve to show your face anywhere in Houston again. I came here to talk to you, Ruby. Like the little talk you had with Billy Joe the other day? What are you talking about? I guess Billy Joe told you exactly what he thought of your cheap little affair with Joe Foster. Hey, Ruby, I could have told Billy Joe a couple of things myself, but I didn't. What's that supposed to mean? Nobody knows about your little involvement in this whole thing. I don't know what you're talking about. You told me yourself you told Pete Parnell where Joe was hiding. So what if I did? Well, that kind of makes you involved, don't you think? No, I don't think. <laughs> well, I don't think Billy Joe is going to be too happy when he finds out you knew where Joe Foster was hiding all the time. Come to think of it, I think the police are going to feel the same way. Well, there's your man now. What are you going to say to him to stall him until Phil Roberts leaves? Well, I'll just say that Ben wants to talk to him. That's all. And what if Ben is talking to Phil when Billy Joe goes up to him and asks him what he wants? Oh, I hadn't thought about that. What should I do? <laughs> I don't know. Looks to me like you've got what is known as a problem. I'll see you. Wait, you can't leave me now. Yeah, I can. Good luck. Well, it's quitting time. Well, good show, Billy Joe. Well, yeah, you told me that before, so thanks again, and I'll see you the day after tomorrow. Oh, wait! What? What? Hey, I just gave Ben the list of names you need to call to get uh, Lady Bird Johnson on the show. Surprised to see you still here. Well, I was just leaving. Excuse me. How was your visit with Justin earlier today? Fine. I don't think it was. But if you don't want to talk about it. No, I don't. Honey, are you all right? I will be just as soon as TJ stops following me around. He's just trying to be pleasant, sweetheart. No, he's not, Mama. He wants to find out what I told Justin this afternoon. Rena. Mama, you're the one who told him I had gone and seen Justin. That's true, I did. I wish you'd stop talking to him. And have him leave me alone, please. What did you say to Justin? Mama, I don't want to talk about it. Well, what was the big surprise you had for I want to have a good time, okay? All right. Well, we'll talk about this later. You know, I can't understand why Stephen hasn't come down from the house yet. Oh, I don't think he was very comfortable in his suit, honey. He's probably changing his clothes. No, but it's been an awfully long time. 
Okay, Mama, I'll go and get him. Thanks, Rena. Hello, beautiful. Hey, Vicky, did you see this uh, fantastic lavalier the striker gave oh, Jenny? Yes, he showed it to me last night. It's beautiful. Isn't it pretty? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm quite impressed with T.J. Canfield. He seems to have matured quite a bit since I used to know him. I see he's still quite a ladies' man, too. Oh, yes, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> he seems to be quite taken with Rena. I don't think Rena's quite taken with him. She oh. can't stand. Oh, well, that will change if he stays around long enough. I think he's charming. Where is Rena? Oh, she went up to the house to get Steve. Stephen Marshall? It's Rena Decker. Stephen? There's no way you can prove I know anything about Joe Foster. I'm going to have to testify at Pete Parnell's trial. Well, that's got nothing to do with me. <laughs> when I tell them what I know, and I mention your connection, they're going to put you on the witness stand. Do you think anybody's going to believe you? Why wouldn't they? After all the lies you told to everybody you know when you were trying to protect Joe, nobody's ever going to believe you again. Well. If they don't believe me, maybe they'll believe Mr. Parnell or Mr. Lawrence. What do you expect to gain from this, Elena? Well, Ruby, I really don't want to do it. Elena, what do you want? I want us to make a deal. We had a deal, remember? You were supposed to sing here at the coop, and I was not going to tell anybody about Joe, and I kept my part of the bargain. And so did I. I sang here. You were getting ready to run out on me. You forced me into that, Ruby. So now you're going to force me into something else, is that it? I don't want to think of it as forcing you into anything. I really think I'm doing you a favor. Really? And exactly what am I supposed to do for you in return? I want you to talk Billy Joe into hiring me back at the coop. That's impossible. Nothing's impossible. There's no way Billy Joe is ever going to let you sing here again. Well, you're smart, Ruby. I think you'll find a way. I can't. Billy Joe is sure that Joe Foster is responsible for Nita's divorce and him. He'll never forgive you for hiding Joe. If you talk to him, I think he will. Are you going to the coop, Billy Joe? Uh, yeah. Well, if you don't mind hanging around here until I'm finished, I'd appreciate a ride over there. Uh, yeah, but didn't I see your little sports car parked out front today? Yes, but uh, I'm having a little trouble with it. There's a garage down the street that I use, Lacey. It's good. I'll drive you down there. Oh, thank you, Mr. Roberts. I don't want to put you out, though. You wouldn't be putting me out at all. Come on, let's go. But my car is a foreign car, and there are not too many places that have the well, right Well, you're cars. in luck. This place is, specializes in foreign cars, and they're the best in Houston. Oh, thank you, Mr. Roberts. I appreciate your concern, but... There's a garage that I've been using ever since I came to Houston. And you don't want to leave your car to any other garage, huh? Well, I've had this trouble before, and they know just what to do about it. You're sure? Because it's no trouble at all. Oh, I'm sure. I'll, I'll get it taken care of first thing in the morning. Well, you get an early start. I don't want you late for work. We've got a long day ahead of us tomorrow. I won't be late. Good night. What's this all about? Well... Ben wanted me to keep you here late tonight so he could talk to you. And didn't want Mr. Roberts to know. Talk about what? Lacey, do you know where Phil Roberts is? He just left. Good. Hey, what's going on here? Am I fixing to be fired? Or what? Oh, no, no. As a matter of fact, we're fixing to give you a promotion. Now, I'm so sorry Stryker had to leave so early for Washington. Oh, I am too. And Grant. It's too bad he couldn't be here today. Huh? Where's Grant? Well, he had a board meeting in Boston. He just couldn't get out of it. Uh, 
a shame that so many people were busy today and couldn't be here. No, I know. Oh, Ryan, I'm so glad you've decided to accept Stryker's offer of a partnership in his firm. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I'm real happy I'm going to be practicing law again. <laughs> Who's going to run World Oil? I'm not sure, but Justin's not going to give up trying. Ashley told me that Iris fired him. Well, he was fired as president, but not as head of the production division. As far as I know, he's going to have that job, and he still has it as of right now. Will you excuse me for a minute? Where are you going? I'm just going to talk to Lillane. There are a few things I want to ask her to do for me when we're on our honeymoon. Okay. Okay. See you later. You're a cop. No more of that now, you know. Well, well, well. How's the bridegroom doing? Oh, I've never been happier in my life. <laughs> Did you find Steve, honey? Mama, would you excuse us for a minute, please? Sure. Steven's gone. You mean gone? Yes, he's gone. Gone where? He went off with Barrett. What do you mean he went off with Barrett? He left a letter for Ginny. Come on upstairs. I can't read this stuff. Sure you can. But I've never read a commercial before in my life. Well, it's simple. You just uh, say the words like you believe them. Well... How am I supposed to believe the words when I don't even know what they're talking about here? What do you mean? Well, I don't even know the first thing about tractors. That's what this whole thing's about. Well, look, Billy Joe, you, you've you seen Phil do the commercials, haven't you? Well, yeah. Well, all you got to do is read them the same way. Well, well, wait a minute. I thought you told me that the guys from Texas Tractors didn't like the way Phil was reading the commercials. Well, that's that's not exactly what I said. Well, I thought the whole idea was that, that they're going to dump Phil. <laughs> no, no, nobody's talking about uh, dumping Phil, Billy Joe. It's just that uh, they don't want him doing their commercials anymore. I don't get it. Well, it's not even that they don't like the way he does the commercials. It's just that they think that you have more of the image that they want to project. Oh. Well, what kind of image have I got? Well... You're wholesome, and sincere, and young. Look, I don't want to leave you in a lurch or anything, Ben. I, I think you're an all right guy, and I, I like you a lot. But? But I think you got the wrong person for this kind of job. Why? Because I'm just no good at, at reading commercials. Every time I try to do it, I feel like a phony. Well, everybody feels that way at first. It's natural. But, but you'll get over it. Look... All I'm asking is that you, that you give it a, uh, the old Billy Joe try. Well, all right, I'll, I'll give it a try, but I think you're making a big mistake. I think you'll be just fine, Billy Joe. Well, who are those guys? The client. You, you mean the guys from Texas Tractors? They look like a couple of stiffs from a funeral parlor. Sure, Billy Joe, why don't you just, just stay right here and... I'll take care of them. I am trying to understand what you're doing, but you got to know that it's not easy. Why? Why is it so difficult for you to understand that I love Joe Foster? Because of the kind of man Joe Foster is. You couldn't possibly know what kind of man Joe Foster is. Well, I know what he's done to you. No, you don't. That's just it, Ricky. He saved my life twice. He's kind and he's gentle. Joe Foster cares for me more than anyone I've ever known. Now, come on, Elena. Max has care. As a matter of fact, more than care for you, Max loved you. And I love you and Maggie loves you. We're all just trying to understand what it is you've gotten yourself into. <laughs> I don't think any of you are ever going to understand because you really don't want to. That's not true. We do want to. Yeah, but you refuse to see the kind of person Joe Foster really is. Maybe you're right, but... I'm going to stand by Joe no matter what happens, Ricky. I want you to know that. And if it means that the rest of my family is going to abandon me, then that's just the way it's going to have to be. Honey, that's not going to happen. Here. 
Dear Mom, since it might be a while before we can send for them, please take care of my horses and morning glory. I love you, but I know I'll be better off with Dad. Love, Stephen. Where's the letter you found on the floor? Here it is. Let me see. Well, you know what happened, don't you? Well, to me, it looks like a letter that Ginny wrote to Barry years ago. The second page is a page of Ginny's signature. I remember Barry told me once that he used to save all of Ginny's letters. Barry just rewrote the first page so Steve would believe that Ginny didn't really want him around. And that must be how he convinced Steve to go with him. Look, Ryan, they couldn't have gone that far. Now, Daddy has a lot of friends on the highway patrol, like, like Cody Allen. I think we should call him and have him stop Steve and Barry. If Cody can arrange it, I could talk to Steve. I know I can make him understand what Barry has done to Ginny's him. Ago. Maybe Ginny won't even have to know about any She's of this. She's waiting for Steve right now, wondering what's happened to him. We're not going to be able to keep this from him for very long. Well, at least we have to try. I don't even know what kind of car Barrett's driving. I don't know what color it is. I don't know where he rented it from, what direction it's headed in. Ryan, call the police. Have the police take care of all that information for us. They must have rented a car at the airport. For heaven's sake, he kidnapped no, Steve. He didn't kidnap him, Marina. Steve went along of his own free will. Barry tricked him. I know that. Oh, we're wasting time. Let's call the highway patrol. <laughs> When you're riding a Texas tractor, you're riding tall in the saddle. The Texas tractors were the farmer's friend. And remember, Texas tractors are made in the good old U.S. of A. That was very good, Billy Joe. Why don't you and Lacey go wait over on the other side of the studio? You're good, Billy Joe. Are you kidding? I was awful. That's not true. A robot could have done a better job than I did. I tell you, once I got up there, I just didn't know what to do with my hands. Well, your hands look just as fine. I kept on hanging there, like, doing nothing. You know what? I just, I don't know. What, what would you do? Imagine being up there in front of those two old guys, staring a hole right through you, and all you can do is just remember your hands are hanging there, not doing anything. <laughs> your hands look very natural. Well, look at the way they're staring at me. I mean, like, if I don't get kicked off the show completely. Well, that's not going to happen. The ratings have gone up since you and Ricky have been on the show. They hated me. Tell me the truth. Just the opposite. They loved you. They think you're just the person they've been looking for. <laughs> you're kidding. They want to sign you to a separate contract for commercials for 50000 a year. <laughs> $50,000 a year? <laughs> Not enough? No, 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 that's fine. That's, that's great. That's, <laughs> that's fantastic. Why are you looking that way? Because I'm the one that's going to have to break the news to Phil. <laughs> so are you sure this is what you really want, Elena? Yes. I went back to the apartment today to get some of my things in. It just made me so sad. I, I can't live there anymore. This is not for a while. Yeah, but where are you going to stay? Well, I could stay on in the apartment above Bobby Sue's. It's cheaper, anyhow. And then right now I'm a little hard up for money. Oh, I can give you some money if you're, you know, if you're a little light. No, 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 thanks. But Ruby has agreed to talk to Billy Joe about me going back to the coop to sing. Well, that was very nice of Ruby to do that. Yes, it was, wasn't it? You know, I know you two were uh, not getting along too well there for a while. I'm glad things are better between you now. Well, we've sort of come to an understanding. Yeah, but I, I still feel bad about taking your apartment. Why? Ricky, you're doing me a favor. You sure you're not just saying that? Yes, I'm sure. Now, look, that lease has Terry's name on it, and if you're not going to take it, I'm going to have to find somebody else to sublet it. Well, I guess Terry would rather have her brother living there than some stranger, huh? Yes, I know she would. And anyway, I want to hold on to it because I'm sure Terry's going to want it when she comes back to Houston. Well, I think our sister's having too good a time in Paris to come back, but I think you're right about holding on to the apartment. Holding on to what apartment? Oh, Elena was just offering to let me take over her apartment. Well, that was real sweet of Elena. Where are you going to stay? I'm going to stay on in the, the apartment above Bob Sue's for a while. Well, honey, if you don't get going, you're going to be late for your own show. Oh, you're right. I forgot what time it was. I'll see you after the show, baby. Okay. You buck up, kid, okay? Bye, Ricky.
Well, Lena, that was real nice of you to offer us your apartment. Us? That's right. I offered that apartment to my brother, Ruby. It's the same thing. Ricky and I are practically living together now out at the ranch. In fact, a couple weeks ago, I said to Ricky that it would be real good if we could find ourselves a place in town. Save us the long drive in. You think you can get everything you want, don't you? Just about. You caused me and Joe a lot of trouble, Ruby. I'm not going to forget that. Well, at the moment, you need me. If you ever want to sing here again. That's true. But the day will come when I don't need you anymore. And then, Ruby, you better watch out. Allerlene, I may be able to find a job for you at KVIK. Jenny and Rena put you up to this, didn't they? No. I did. You know, we're always looking for bright young people to train. Oh, I appreciate it, but I really don't want to work in the city. I want to work in Marshall Village. I'll keep looking. Something will turn up sooner or later. Well, if it doesn't, or you change your mind, give me a call. I'll try to help. Thanks, TJ. Has anyone seen Rena and Ryan? No. Well, I saw them walking up to the house. I'll go find them if you want. Oh, honey, thank you. I'd appreciate that. Okay. You having a good time? Wonderful. Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure. Do you know why Rena went to visit Justin earlier today? Yes, I do know. Why? I think it's better that Rena tell you that. All right. Oh, there you two are. Where's my son? If he doesn't get down here, we won't be able to cut the cake. What's the matter with you? Honey, we have some bad news. Stephen, something happened to Stephen? Stephen went off with Barry, Jenny. What? What's she talking about? He left this note. So you think Ruby's going to be able to talk Billy Joe into hiring you again? <sighs> She'll have to. I hope she can. Well, anyway, Billy Joe's been so busy with the Phil Roberts show that Ruby's been making most of the decisions there anyhow. Yeah, but a decision as important as hiring you again is going to have to go through Billy Joe. Yeah, I guess it will. Doesn't end, does it? What? Trouble I cause you? You cause me. Joe, if it wasn't for me, you'd be safe and sound in South America and not lying here wounded in a hospital with some police guard outside. Mm hmm. It's just one hitch. And what's that? If I was in South America, I wouldn't be able to spend the last two months with you. Yeah, but you'd be free. Lena, there's something you gotta know and believe. I wouldn't trade these last two months for anything. I'm not going to let them send you to prison, Joe. I won't. You might not have any choice. Yes, I will. And I'm not going to let that happen. So many things I wanted. You'll have them. No, not for me. For us. Joe, we're going to have that little white hacienda one of these days. And that big family you wanted. They might knock me up for a long time. No, they won't. But if they do, I'll wait for you. I'd wait 50 years, I promise you. Oh, 50 years is a lot longer than you think. I don't care. I love you. I love you, too. Now, I never thought it would be possible for me to tell that to another human being. But I can tell it to you because it's true. Someday, somehow, we're going to be together, Joe. Oh, Lena, there's, 
There's something I've always wanted to tell you. It's never really seemed to be the right time. Now, well, now ain't the right time either, but I gotta tell you. The right time to say what? Well, if everything had gone the way we planned it, we'd be in Mexico, gotten married, be husband and wife. That may never happen now. Yes, Let it... me finish. I can't ask you to wait for me. Joe. And we might be separated for a long time, and I don't want you to make any promises you can't keep. Don't say that, Joe. I'm just saying the truth. I know how it is when people are separated from, long, from each other for a long time. I'll never love anybody but you. Well, you never know what life's going to throw in front of you. A lot of things can happen. Now, I can't give you a wedding ring. There's something I want you to have. Joe. I want you to have it. I can't ask you to be my wife. But I just want you to think of me when you wear it. That's all I ask. I'll never stop thinking about you. Never. Hey, Roy. Uh, I was out back in the kitchen with Wang. I heard the phone ring. I was wondering if it was that guy who called before, you know, the one from Nashville, what his name? No, he hasn't called. Okay, well, you let me know if he calls, won't you? I will. There you are. I was about to send out a search party for you. What's been keeping you? I'll tell you what's been keeping me, little sister. You are now looking at a certified commercial star. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, the clients for the Phil Roberts show want me to do the commercials instead of Phil. Well, how does Phil feel about that? <laughs> I don't know. He doesn't know about it yet, but uh, I'm just glad I'm not going to be around when he does find out. Well, I hope you didn't sign anything. I did. Well, if they're going to have you make the commercial, they said they'd give you more money, wouldn't they? Of course. Well, how much? Well, uh, Ben says I'm going to be clearing uh, over $50,000. That means I'm going to be making a total of over $100,000 off the Phil Roberts show. Of course, 10% of that goes to my agent, Ruby Wright. Well, what would you think? <laughs> I think that's terrific. <laughs> I'll tell you what I think. I think we ought to celebrate. Matter of fact, I got a special bottle of champagne in the fridge there for special occasions, and this is it. So you get a couple of champagne glasses over there. Right over here. I'll be back a little bit later on, all right? Okay. <laughs> Not a couple of champagne glasses, please, Roy. The people on the Phil Roberts show just gave Billy Joe a great big raise. Well, all right. Bo. Well. I wrote this letter to Barrett when I was sure I was pregnant with Steve. Do you remember what you wrote on that first page? Probably told him about the ranch news. I always started my letters out that way. Well, then he must have thrown out that first page and substituted his own page. It said that there was no room in your life for Steve. Rita? Why is Barrett doing this to me? Because he's crazy, Ginny. Because he wants to hurt you. Taking Steve is the only way he knows how to do that. How could Steve believe this? How could he believe that I don't love him? Darling, he doesn't know what or whom to believe anymore. Just think about it. Your divorce from Barry, Max's death, your marriage to, to Ryan, and then your decision to move away from the ranch and then back into town. That was just too much for a little guy to deal with. I should have helped him more. I should have spent more time with him. Jenny, honey, don't do this. Don't don't start thinking about all the things you should have done. You did everything you could. I called Cody at the highway patrol. Now, they checked all the airlines, but he's not listed on any of the flights leaving Houston tonight or tomorrow. Did they know what kind of car he was driving, what his license number was? Not yet. They know that he didn't rent the car at the airport, so they're checking all the car rental agencies in town. Is it possible that, that Barry could have taken Steve to Colorado? I don't know, but I doubt it. Why? It'd be too easy for us to trace him. My guess is that he's uh, taken him somewhere to start a new life. 
Honey, it's just a guess. Now we have to be ready for anything. He could change his name and just disappear. Kate's calling the people uh, who own the ranch where Barrett's been staying. They're going to call us if they hear from him. And if they don't, he'll get in touch with you somehow. Ginny, I know he will. I'm still afraid they'll never find Steve. They will. It might take a little time. We just have to be patient. He's my child and I love him so much. I want him with me. With us. So do I. I think Barrett's been planning this for weeks. Look, maybe Steve will change his mind and come on home. He's... Barrett's so unstable. I'm afraid for Stephen. Listen, Stephen's smart. He's a very resourceful boy now. He knows how to take care of himself. Think of this. My baby. I know. And you're going to be thinking of him that way when you're 80 years old, aren't you? I love you so much. And I want to make you happy, but I don't... You're going to find Steve, I promise. Hey. I always keep my promises, don't I? <laughs> Almost always. Well, I'm going to keep this one. You can count on it. Yeah, I will. Thanks again. I didn't know Stryker was in Washington. Yes, but he talked to someone in his office in Denver. They're getting in touch with the highway patrol out there in case Barrett and Steve are headed that way. Well, I don't think Barrett will take Steve back to that ranch with him. Why not? Well, I don't think he wants anyone to find them. Maybe you're right. Where's Ginny? She's in Steve's room. And she told me that Barrett was here yesterday. I should have tracked him down and sent him on the next plane back to Denver. You and Ginny had no idea that Barrett would take Steve. Steve took all his track and basketball medals. I don't think I'll ever see him again. <laughs> What's that, Steve? My track and basketball medals. <laughs> when we get settled, get you enrolled in school, you'll win a lot more of those. Are we going to live in Houston? No, I don't think so. Then where are we going to live? Well, we'll have to decide about that pretty soon, but first we're going to do a little fishing, okay? But we have no tackle. There's a whole cabinet full of tackle out in the back porch. I know all the best fishing spots in this lake. And we'll take that boat, go down past the old railroad trestle and beyond the bend. It's beautiful down there. Okay. Why don't we go out and check on that tackle? What's the matter? Mom saw me win all these medals. She went to all my track meets. Well, she has Ryan Connor now. You and I have each other. You're up early this morning. You know, I've got a lot to do today. When are you going to the coop? Well, I thought I'd uh, leave in a couple minutes. Why? Oh, well, I was just wondering if you were going to go back KVIK, you know, and record some of those commercials today. Oh, uh, no. Uh, Phil Roberts is going to do the rest of the commercials till the end of the week, and I start next week. Something wrong? No. You haven't stopped moving around since you got here. Well, like I said, I got a lot to do today. Matter of fact, you've been acting kind of funny ever since I brought that bottle of champagne back to the bar last night. What's gone into you? Well... 
didn't seem too happy to see me last night, Ruby. I can't imagine why. Well, you better get used to it, because old Bo is here to stay. You really want to know what's bothering me. I've been wanting to talk to you, but I've been afraid to bring it up because I know how you're going to react. Talk to me about what? I hope you take this the right way. Will you, will you just quit hemming and hawing and tell me what, is you, what you want to say? Okay. Now, I know Elena has done some really terrible things. That's enough. I knew you were going to react that way. And if you knew, you shouldn't have brought it up. Billy Joe, I want you to hear me out anyway. I've heard everything I want to hear about Elena. That Joe Foster guy she claims she's in love with, that's the reason why Nita and me are divorced now. Billy Joe! Well, it's true. Okay, okay. I know you feel that way right now, but you got to remember, before all this happened, you and Elena were very good friends. That's right, were. Well, you can't just go around cutting people off that way. I ain't cutting anybody off except Elena. Well, what about Nita? You've refused to talk to her ever since the divorce. Nita's different. Billy Joe, you got to stop taking everything so personally. you got to think about what's good for business. Nita and Elena got nothing to do with business. Elena does. And as long as Ricky's singing at the top of the World Club, we need Elena to sing at the coop. Everything at the coop is running just fine. Now, that's not true, and you know it. Business is already starting to fall off. Nobody wants to come in and just hear Andy and the band up there playing all by themselves. We've got to hire Elena back now, even if it's only just until we get somebody to take her place. Look, Ruby, I don't care what you do with the coop. I've got my hands full with the Phil Roberts show right now, and you pretty much run the coop anyways. Well, I just thought you might like to have the final word. You are the manager. Yeah, in name, I'm the manager. But usually do what you want anyways. Okay. Then I guess it's settled. It's settled. I'll tell you one thing. You start depending on Elena, she's going to let you down just like she did me. Yeah, you let me worry about that. Yeah. You worry about that. Don't say I didn't warn you. I'll be there in about 15 minutes. I wonder whether Mom misses me. I doubt it. You told me she and Ryan were going to Acapulco on their honeymoon. Yeah, they're going to stay at Aunt Vicky and Uncle Stryker's house. What's wrong? I didn't tell Rena goodbye. Well, when you're right to Buddy, you can drop her a note, too. Maybe I should do that right away. Ah, there's plenty of time, son. Why don't we wait until we get uh, settled somewhere? And besides, I don't have any paper. Yeah, I'll buy some later. Get myself all hooked up here. I'm going to have to fish with a towel. That's the first train I've heard all morning. When I was a boy, there used to be a train passing through almost every hour. Before I went to bed last night, I heard two trains. Oh, yeah. Are you going fishing with me? Sure. Well, let's go then. What do you say? Dad? Yeah? Why didn't Mom tell me herself that she didn't want me around anymore instead of writing it in that letter? Well, I guess that uh, she just didn't have time to talk to you, son. Where is the letter? I don't know. Well, didn't you bring it with you? I thought I did, but I can't find it. I told you to bring it with you, Steve. Maybe it's in my jacket pocket. I'll look later. I remember when you wrote this letter. You'd just come home from the... seeing the doctor. You were pregnant with Steve. Oh, how could Barrett use this letter to hurt his own son this way? Typing a new first page. To say that you and Ryan wanted children of your own and there was no room for Steve. And then putting it with this second page that has your signature so that he could verify the lie. I just don't understand how Barrett could do it. I have this 
terrible feeling that I'll never see Steve again. Ginny, Ryan's doing everything he can to find them. Lord only knows where they are. Cody, check with the airlines. There are no reservations for Barrett and Steve on any of the flights leaving Houston today or tomorrow. We think maybe he could have made a reservation under someone else's name? Well, that's true, but Barrett would have had to rent the car under his own name. But what if he used a fake driver's license? Well, I don't think he would have gone to all that trouble. Well, he sure as hell went to trouble to fake that letter. Honey. Honey. We can't give up hope now. I can't stand the thought of Steve thinking that I don't love him anymore. Steve couldn't believe that. By the time Barrett gets through with him, he will. It's right. You and Steve are too close. He's always going to love you. No. No, we weren't. Not lately. I should have spent more time with him. I should never have let him go on to that camp for a month and then come home right away and, and go with Buddy and Buddy Jr. on that camping trip. He probably thinks that I thought he was in stop the way. It, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Now, Steve's always been a part of every decision you've made. Here. Drink some of this. Yeah. I have to call Buddy Jr. He must be so no, no, upset. No, 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 Rain. I called him last night. Everything's I'll fine. I'll get it. He's fine. Hello? Yes, he is. It's Cody from the state police. Cody! Huh? Yeah, yeah, I'll call you later. Thanks. The police have found the place where Barrett rented the car. Come on, let's go. Jenny and Ryan have gone to see the rent a car man. Well, maybe you'll give them some information that will help them. All right. Thank you. Yeah, goodbye. Who was that, Grandma? Wanda. What was that you were telling her about a rent a car place? Cody found out where Barrett rented the car. Where? I don't know. Ginny and Ryan flew out of here before they could tell me. Grandma, I hired a private detective to find Barry. I want to give him a call. Justin, you stay right where you are. You've done enough damage already. I care about Steve. Isn't it a light for that now? What do you mean? I've always been concerned about Steve. You've never cared about anyone, Justin. You began to care for Steve when you decided to become a gentleman farmer. That's not true, Grandma. You started all this, Justin, by telling Barrett that if he'd sell you his shares of the ranch, you'd run Ryan out of town and you'd get Jenny back for him. When you couldn't deliver on your promise... Then Barry. Because of me, Barry went off the deep end? Is that what you're saying, Grandma? I have to talk to Guy. Grandma? I had no idea something like this would happen. I know. You better not hurt that kid. Joe? Did Ruby talk to you? Yeah. Well, what do you think of my coming back to sing at the coop? I'll tell you what I think. I think it's a lousy idea. I think having anything to do with somebody who was hiding a criminal from the police is a lousy idea. Joe is not a criminal. Yeah, you got another name for it? That guy almost killed my wife and child. That is not true. He let me call the ambulance and the doctor for her, Billy Joe. He didn't have to do that. He knew the police were going to be there, but he still let me do it. Billy Joe. I need this job. There's plenty of jobs, Elena. I want to come back to the coop. What for? You got a national reputation? You already got a hit record? There's plenty of places you can sing at. The people know me here. Look, if it was up to me, I'd say no and that'd be it. But for some crazy reason, Ruby thinks she needs you here at the coop. So if she wants to use you, she can. But I don't want anything to do with you. I've got some work to do, if you don't mind. I want you to be my manager again. What? I said, I'd like you to manage my career. 
You don't give up, do you, Lena? Hey, Joan. You were such a good friend. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be anywhere. Saying it and meaning it are two different things. I do mean it. After what you pulled with that Joe Foster, I find that pretty hard to believe. All right, so maybe I wasn't the kind of friend I should have been. But I want to make that up to you, Billy Joe. I don't want you to make it up. All I want is to be left alone. beginning to wonder if you were going to make our appointment. I had to go by and talk to my brother about business first. Well, we've got a little unfinished business to take care of ourselves. You shouldn't have showed up last night without calling first of all. Now, I tried to call you. In fact, I kept calling all day over to that coop and they kept telling me that you were at some TV station. You must be doing real good for yourself, Ruby. I'm doing all right. At least I'm making ends meet. That's better than I can say I was doing in Nashville. Well, Houston has a lot more opportunities than Nashville for a girl of your special talents. What's that supposed to mean? Just that you're a good wheeler dealer, Ruby, and that's what Houston is known for. I bet you were surprised I was able to track you down like this. Especially after the way that you walked out on me. I didn't walk out on you, Bo. Oh, no? What do you call it when I come home to an apartment and find it empty and all of your clothes gone? I was doing you a favor. And the way things were going between us, I figured you'd be better off without me. I was real considerate of you. And were you also thinking of my benefit when you took all the money that was in our bank account? I needed some money to get from Nashville to Houston. What's so all fired important about getting to Houston? I came here to help my big brother. I read in the paper how he was having some trouble with his client, Elena Decker, so I thought I'd come by and see what I could do for him. Ever the good Samaritan. You don't have to believe me if you don't want to. Oh, I believe you. If by helping your brother, what you mean... It's just you're going to help yourself to his bank account, too. Well, why did you come to Houston? You owe me money, Ruby. I came to collect it with interest. Maybe they're on a coffee break. There has to be someone here. Brian, ring the bell again. Sorry to keep you waiting. Can I help you? Yes, Cody Allen from the Highway Patrol said you might have some information for us. I don't know any Cody Allen from the Highway Patrol. Is there someone in charge here? I'm in charge. I'm Mrs. Key, the owner of Key Rent-A-Car. Uh, Cody Allen called me earlier, said you rented a car to a man I'm looking for, a Barrett Marshall. I don't remember the name. Cody said that he spoke to someone here. Well, maybe he talked with Mr. Craig. Can we please talk to Mr. Craig? Well, he's on a coffee break right now. You know, you look very familiar. Have you rented from us? No. Well, I'd swear that I'd seen you before. Uh, would you like to look at one of our brochures? Key rent a car is one of the best key rental deals in town. This uh, man that you're looking for, is he a fugitive from justice? No, uh, not exactly. Then why are the police involved? Look, Cody Allen's a friend of ours. He's trying to locate him for us. I see. Well, you know, if it's not official, I can't allow any information to be divulged. I have a right to protect our customers. The man is my ex-husband, and he's taken my child. Oh, dear, I'm so sorry. Well, look. I've read about things like this happening. Well, it's happening to us right now, and we we need some help. All right. Have a seat. Mr. Craig should be here in a minute. I'll authorize him to give you whatever information he has. Thank you. We appreciate that. Justin Barrett loves 
D. He's not going to do anything to hurt him. Mm. I'm not so sure of that. Not anymore. If Barry can do something like this, I mean, practically kidnapped a kid. There's no telling what he can do, Ashley. Well, the one he wanted to hurt was Jenny. That's why he took Steve off to begin with. Steve must be so confused, scared, uprooting him like that with no warning. Well, Justin, now he agreed to go <gasps> with him. He wrote that letter saying that he thought that he'd be better off with his daddy. Barrett lied to him. He believed him. What? You lied to Barrett, too. Try to get him to sell you the shares of the ranch. Actually, I'm... I'm talking about a little kid. Anyway, I don't even think Barrett ever really cared for Stephen. Uh, if he did, he would have never left Houston. Well, now, I don't... I don't think that's necessarily true. I'm never going to leave my kid, no matter what. Oh, I know. Look... Jenny and Ryan are going to find Stephen and they'll bring him home. Everything's going to be fine. Don't worry. Huh? What you need to worry about is that board meeting this afternoon. You need to go on upstairs and get dressed. you got to go into town. I know. Ryan's not going to go back to the company. Maybe Mrs. Wheeler will change her mind about you, Justin, and let you stay on. Well, she promised to help. I think she'll keep that promise. Iris is not going to keep me on as president of the company. I'll tell you that right now. Well, what are you going to do? Are you going to stay on and run the production division, or are you going to quit? Well, a lot of it depends on Iris. Just have to wait and see. Well, if it's money you want, I can write you out a check right now. Oh, Ruby. You owe me interest now. I don't owe you any interest, Bo. Half that money was mine, and I've only had it for a couple months. Now, I don't suppose that you want anybody to find out about our little secret now, do you? How much interest are you talking about? Now, that's what I haven't quite figured out yet. But when I do, I'll let you know. I don't have very much money, you know. Oh, that's not the way I hear it. Well, then you heard it wrong. I read in Billboard magazine Elena Decker's brother Ricky's doing real good now. What were you doing with a copy of Billboard? Well, I like to keep up with what's going on in the music business. Matter of fact, that's how I tracked you down. According to the article I read, you got Ricky Decker a job. Singing at the top of the World Club right here in Houston. Yeah, well, Ricky's just starting out and he's not making very much. Oh, that's too bad. Well, I'll just have to wait around here until he does. I missed you, Ruby. You shouldn't have run out on me like that. buy the coop and take care of some business. On my way back, I can stop at the bank. Why don't I just go with you? I don't think that's a very good idea. Well, I'd like to meet your brother. That's not a very good idea either. Why not? Well, I'd have too much explaining to do. You stay here. I'll be back as fast as I can. Sunny 
Craig. Uh, yeah, we called earlier. Uh, you must be Mr. Connor. That's right. Uh, nice to meet you. It's my wife, ma'am. Uh, can you tell us anything about Barrett Marshall? Uh, that's the man Cody talked to me about. That's right. Did he have a little boy with him? Oh, uh, yeah. Good looking kid. Had your color. He's my son. Uh, do you have the form? Sure. Thank you. Yeah, I went to high school with Cody. He's a good old boy. Did you talk to Barrett or Steve? Some. Do you uh, remember what he said? Well, the man, uh, Mr. Marshall, he did most of the talking. He wasn't very friendly. Did the boy seem frightened at all to you? No, just kind of shy. I tried to talk to him. I just love kids. Uh, he did tell me they were going fishing, though. Did he say where? Well, as a matter of fact, I tried to talk to the boy about that. I know all the best fishing places around here, but uh, Mr. Marshall started to get real impatient about getting his car. He rented the car for a week, right? A week? Yeah, that's right. Did he tell you what location he might be dropping it off? No, we don't have another location. I mean, I mean, what city? No, we're strictly local. If he wanted to drive to another city and leave the car, there'd be a drop-off fee. Because we'd have to send somebody up to pick up the car or else pay somebody to drive it back. Well, there, there are no extra charges on the form, though. Well, then he'll return the car here. Justin. Well, he's getting ready. You know, he has that board meeting this afternoon. Oh, yes, that's right. He's going to be voted out of the company. Well, the presidency. Mm. Maybe. That makes you real happy, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. I think Justin is capable of running a company like World Oil. Well, that's not what I ask you, though. What upsets me is that he felt he had to be dishonest to get the job. You know, under those circumstances, it's a little difficult to feel sorry for him. Well, Ryan doesn't want the job, does he? No. No, he's going to practice law with Stryker. Justin should be glad about that. You are, aren't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> you know, I've made no secret how I feel about oil. And I don't think Ryan was ever very happy working at World Oil. I'm sure practicing law will be much more satisfying. Have Jenny and Ryan called? No. You want some tea? Oh, thank you. You know, um, Justin was very upset about Steve. Well, Steve is a martial heir. That's important to Justin. But, of course, Justin's own children will be much more important to him. Oh, yes. <laughs> Have you managed to get yourself pregnant yet? <laughs> yeah, I'm pregnant. <laughs> By your own diagnosis? No. I went to the doctor yesterday. I even got a medical report to show Justin in case there was any question. <laughs> what doctor did you see? Someone I went to college with. Oh, a friend of yours. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we were in the same sorority. Uh -huh. You know, most of Jenny's friends now were her sorority sisters in college. Wow. They stay in touch. Oh, I know. I'm the same way. Mm. You know, I think those girls would do almost anything for Jenny. Maybe even falsify a medical report to help save her marriage. <laughs> Where's Billy Joe? He's in the office. I talked to him already. So? So? I kept my end of the bargain. Well, then I'll keep mine. As long as I keep singing here at the coop, I won't tell Billy Joe or anybody that you knew where Joe was hiding. How's Joe doing? He's still at the hospital? Yes, with a police guard posted outside his door. When does he go on trial? Ruby, why are you asking? You don't care. Oh, by the way, Ricky's moving our stuff into your apartment this afternoon. Didn't waste any time, did you? Never do. How long do you think it's going to take Ricky to see through you, Ruby? I don't know what you're talking about. You're just using him. As far as you're concerned, Ricky's just your meal ticket. Well, I think he's a little more than that. But I wouldn't worry about your big brother. He's getting everything he needs. 
One of these days, you're going to slip up, Ruby. I doubt it. I'll be waiting for that day. How come you're still so upset with me? Joe almost got killed because of you. You can't blame that on me. You don't think you're to blame for anything, do you? Uh-oh. I'll be waiting. You remember that. Hi. Want to lie down for a while, huh? I have to call Rita. Have you found Barrett? No. He rented a car for a week. According to the agreement he signed, he's supposed to have the car back in the office of Marshall Village. Now, they're going to call us and notify us as soon as he shows up. He's planning to stay in Houston for a week. Apparently so. Well, that doesn't make sense. Maybe he's left town. I, I don't know. Does Cody know all this? Right. We call him, him from the rent-a-car place. We gave him a description of the car, the license number. He should have everybody looking for it by now. Well, but they can't arrest Barrett. No, no, He's no. done nothing illegal. But if Ginny can get to Steve, then she can explain how Barrett tricked him. I just can't understand why he wants to stay in Houston. I can't either. Ginny looks tired. I know. She hardly slept last night. I'm so sorry. You should both be on your honeymoon. We'll be on our honeymoon when we find Steve. Cody called Rena and told her about the rent-a-car place. Okay, I talked to the guy in the office. I gave him Kate's number, the Bellman's, ours, so we should be at one of the three places when Barrett shows up. Yeah, maybe we should have stayed there until Barrett and Steve did show up. Honey, there's no telling... When they're going to show up. Well, I know, but I, I would have stayed. I wouldn't have minded. If Barrett had seen you waiting in the office, he never would go in. Mrs. Key told me I could wait in the back. Okay, he rented the car for a week. We'll have the place staked out when it's due to return, okay? Maybe the day before, too, okay? All right. Maybe Cody will find them before the week is over. Sure hope so. Just hope Steve's all right. I'm sure he is. You're quite a fisherman. I used to go fishing a lot with Max and Buddy. I'm very impressed. I already got a bite. A lot of it's luck, depending on where you throw your line. Is that right? I bet Mom and Ryan are deep sea fishing right now. Your mother never liked to fish. She used to go fishing with me sometimes, but we never usually brought home anything because she always wanted to throw the fish back. <sighs> I think we better do something about lunch soon, don't you think? I'm not very hungry. Well, how about a swim? Okay. Why don't you put on your trunks? Dad, how much longer are we going to be out of the cabin? Oh, I'm not sure. Why? Well, I was thinking, maybe I could call Buddy and ask him out for the weekend. That way I could say goodbye to him, say goodbye to him and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, let me think about it, okay? Okay. I'm going to go clean up those fish so we can have some lunch after our swim. So, you're a friend of Ruby's. That's right. You're a good friend. Oh, what are you doing here in Houston? Well, when I heard that the streets of Houston were paved with money, I just had to come see that one for myself. Hey, Ruby, I want to talk to you about how much we're going to be paying Andy and the band their new contract. Wait a minute, Billy Joe. Come here, I want you to meet a friend of mine. This is Bo Baker from Nashville. Well, nice to meet you. Likewise. How long are you going to be in town? Mm -hmm. All depends. Depends on what? What work I get. Well, what kind of work do you do? In the entertainment business, or at least I was. Well, what did you do in the entertainment business? Well, a little of everything. I sing, play the guitar, write songs. Well, there's a lot of opportunity here in Houston for people in the entertainment business, huh? Oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, I was just talking to Lane about that. She seems to have done real good. Yeah, well, my little sister here hasn't done too bad either. I'll tell you, Ruby's just been in Houston a couple months, and already she's managing Ricky Decker's career in my own, not to mention handling most of the coop, too. Oh, Ruby manages you? Yeah. Well, I'm a, I'm a regular on the Phil Roberts show, just a local talk show down here. But uh, just last night, they asked me to start doing the commercials for him. Hey, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> I hear those commercials pay real good, too. Good? They, the money's really starting to roll in. Huh, sis? <laughs> yeah.
you were going to put your swim trunks on. I can't find them. They're in the brown bag. Dad, can we invite Buddy out for the weekend? I've been thinking about what we're going to do and uh, where we're going to live. I thought you said we were going to live on a ranch. Yeah, but we have to decide where. Do we want to move out west? Why can't we just stay in Texas? I think there are more opportunities out west. But there are lots of ranches in Texas, and then maybe I could see my mom. Son, your mother may not want to see you. She has other concerns. The sooner you accept that, the better you'll be. I know it hurts, but that's the way it is. Ryan Connors her whole life now. You just try and forget her. I'll uh, meet you out on the dock, okay? Dad. Yeah. Are you sure Mom's happy? Yes. She is happy, son. I should have spent more time with Steve. Paid more attention to him. Jenny. Barrett tricks Steve. It's as simple as that. It's not that simple. There has to be a reason why Steve believes it. I don't love him anymore. Maybe I, maybe Ryan and I never should have gotten married. Jenny, now you must stop this. You're going to tear yourself apart. I'm so worried about it. I'm worried too. But now look, Steve is an independent little guy. He'll probably figure out what's going on. He'll, he might even come home himself. Hello, Jenny. Barrett. Barrett, where are you? How's Stephen? Steve's just fine. How are you, Jenny? I thought you'd postpone your honeymoon. I was right. Barrett, I want Stephen back. You won't get him back. Ever. Barry, if you hurt that child... I'm not going to hurt him. Steve's having a wonderful time. He's getting used to the fact that you're too busy for him. What? <laughs> Why are you doing this? I want you to know how it feels to have someone you love taken away. How much it hurts to be left alone. Barrett, you're the one who's being hurt. It's David. You're the one who's being hurt right now. Now you know what you did to me, Jenny. Now you know what it's like to be left alone and stay awake at night. And think of all the good times and know that you'll never have them again. Barrett, please tell me where you are. Maybe I can meet you somewhere. We can talk. I don't want to talk about it. You've lost Steve, Jenny, and you better get used to it. I'm sure that Ryan will comfort you. Barrett, please don't do this to Stephen, please. Barrett! Barrett! Oh, my God! Ruby, did you set up that rehearsal for me in the band? Yeah, Andy and the boys are going to be here around three. All right, then, if you need me, I'll be at Maggie's having lunch. Bye, right, Bob. Nice meeting you. My pleasure. You think Andy and the guys are asking too much money now that they're going to be uh, doing backup? Well, why don't you try calling Andy instead of talking to his agent? So, Ruby, uh, you're doing real good now, huh? Are you kidding? She's doing great. I tell you, it seems like us rats have a natural talent for making lots of money. <laughs> Billy Joe, I think you better go call Andy now so you can get to his agent, too, huh? Sure. sure. Hey, it's been nice meeting you, Bo. I hope we're seeing you around. Oh, I'm sure you will. Okay. Same old Ruby. Yeah, well, my brother has a tendency to exaggerate. Runs in the family. Bo, I realize now that it was wrong of me to take that money without saying anything to you. I apologize. And I guess I can just write you out a check for the whole amount. It was five thousand, wasn't it? Stop it! What's the matter? You afraid Big Brother's gonna find out that we're something more than just friends? We are just friends, and that's it. Now I'm giving you this money. I'm writing it out for the whole amount, even though half the money was mine. But this is all. Wrong. That's all the money I can give you right now, Bo. I want a lot more. 
and I'm going to collect. Honey, what did Barrett say to you? He, t he took Steve to hurt me. He sounded very pleased with himself. Oh, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have lost control. I, I should have been calm, and maybe he would have agreed to meet no, me somewhere. I doubt it. Maybe he'll call back. If he does, I'm going to tell him that I'll divorce Ryan and marry him. Jimmy! Well, it's the only way I can get Steve back if I lie to Barrett. I don't think Barrett's going to believe that. Yes, he will. I'm sure he will. Did he call long distance? Oh, it's hard to tell. I heard a train whistle. Are you sure? The man at the rent car told you that Steve was talking about going fishing. That's right. I think I know where they are. At the summer cabin by the lake. There's a railroad track about half a mile from there. Not many trains go by there anymore. But the phone was disconnected last summer. Well, the phone company says service has been restored. Yes. Oh, Nita, were there any messages while we were at lunch? Um, yeah, there's a call from the painter, but I took care of it. Oh, is he going to come next Monday? Yes, he said he would, but I'm going to call him tomorrow just to make sure. Great, thanks, huh? Nita has been a lifesaver. I don't know what I would have done without her. Are you having trouble with the renovations? Trouble? Trouble is not the word, Ellie. Look at this place. It's barely started. I can't imagine how we're going to open on time. What is there some way I can help? Yes. You can continue to come by and offer your support from time to time. Oh, you have that. Uh, Paige, I, I, I oh, some... just a minute, uh, Nita. I, I don't want to keep you. I know you have to get back to the station. Oh, there's no rush. What time do you want me to come by for you this evening? You tell me. Well, I told Vicky we'd meet her at her place around seven. Fine. I thought we'd have a drink there and then go to the top of the World Club from Vicky's. So you'll be around, what, uh, 6.30? If that's good for you. Oh, Nito, what time is my appointment with Mrs. Oliver from the Orphanage? Oh, Charity? um, 5 o'clock. Huh, great. Is, uh, something wrong, Nita? No, no, it's not important. I guess it can wait. What is it, hon? Well, while, while I was away on my lunch break, uh... I found this slipped under the door. Oh. I really missed you since you and Mrs. Wheeler were on the outs with each other. And I missed you, too. Well, I'm real glad you're friends again. Well, let's just say that uh, we're working on it. It's going to take a little time, Vivi. What's going to take time? For us to be good friends again. I think we made a good start. Will you join me for lunch? What did you want to see me about, Iris? Justin. You also have some explaining to do about Ashley. All right, thank you very much. Honey, the man at the phone company said the phone service was restored to the cabin late yesterday afternoon. Then Barrett was calling from the cabin. So Steve is there. Let's go. Grandma, Ginny and, and Ryan gone? Yes, they went to talk to Steve. Oh, well, have they found Steve and Barrett? Yes. They're at the summer cabin on the lake. How did they know that? Well, Barrett called Ginny. Barrett told her where they were? No. No, but while she was talking to him on the telephone, she heard a train whistle in the background. The tracks. The tracks down by the cabin. Yes. And the man at the Redicar place said he remembered Steve talking about going fishing. Why did Barrett take Steve to the cabin? Well, I, I guess he must have thought that that was the last place anybody would look for them. Yes, but you'd think that Barrett would try to get Steve out of the state as soon as possible. I mean, he, he would know that Ryan and Jenny would, would call the police, wouldn't he? Now, Steve left of his own free will. He wasn't kidnapped. I suspect Barrett wasn't even thinking about the police. Barrett? tricked Steve into thinking that Ginny didn't love him anymore, Grandma. I know. I just hope when Ryan and Ginny find him, 
that he will believe them. Dad, I thought you said you were coming swimming with me. Uh, we don't have time for a swim right now. But you said... We're leaving right now. Go get dressed and pack your bags. Dad! Now! Is there anything wrong, Paige? Uh, yeah. Uh, no. Everything's fine. Uh, someone's just playing a practical joke on me, only I don't find it very amusing. Listen, I think I'll, uh, take a drive to Maggie's and see how Billy Joe's doing. Sure. I won't be long. More publicity stills from the film? Nita must think I am crazy, Elliot. I wouldn't worry about that. She was here when the other envelope was slipped under the door. Told her it was something from the real estate man. I don't think she believed me then, either. Nita seems to be very understanding. I don't understand it, Elliot. Why would someone do this to me? The question isn't why, but who. I think I know the answer to that question. There are only a few people in Houston who know about that film. Besides you and me, Dennis. Pete Parnell, and that leaves one other person. You think it was Iris? I should have known it was her from the very beginning. Iris wouldn't do a thing like this, Oh, Pete. yes, she would. No, Iris would be as worried as you are about the possibility of this being made public. You were her daughter-in-law. That's still family. She told me she wanted me out of Houston in no uncertain terms and that she wouldn't stop until I left. But your divorce from Dennis is final now. You're out of his life altogether. That's all Iris ever wanted. What could she possibly hope to gain by taunting you this way? I don't know. But I intend to find out. Ashley, I remember some terrific summers. That cabin down by the lake. What do you like to remember the most? Well, my dad, about 5 a.m. every morning he'd take us fishing. 5 a.m.? Yeah. Then he'd get dressed up in his three-piece suit and he'd go off to Houston and wheel and deal for Marshall Oil. You know that Alex Wheeler started his career working for my dad? Yes. You know, he told me that. He was very proud of it. One day, I'm going to take my kids fishing down at that, that lake at 5 a.m. And then I'm going to dress up in my suit, go off to Houston, wheel and deal for martial oil once again. It's a nice dream, isn't it? It sure is. It's, it's happening a little uh, quicker than I had imagined. Our first son is on the way. Well, it's going to be a couple of years before we can go fishing. Iris, you tricked me. How? Oh, you told me that Ashley wasn't really pregnant, knowing that I would tell Justin, and all the while she really is pregnant. I never intended to mention Ashley to you at all. I know how you loathe her. But you did mention her. It just slipped out without my realizing it. You know I do that all the time with you, Rena, and you should have known it was confidential. Well, she claims that she's pregnant. I'm glad. If she is. You said she had copies of the medical report from the doctor. Well, that's what she said they were. But who knows? I didn't see them. I'm sure Justin knows. <sighs> well, it really doesn't matter now. No two people deserved each other more. Darling, Ashley is really a very nice girl. Iris, if you want to be her friend, that's your business. But I don't want to have any part of it. All right. Okay. I understand that there's a World Oil board meeting this afternoon to dump Justin. Yes. Good. I can't allow him to continue, given the bad publicity the company's had lately. Bad publicity? Is that the only reason you're dumping him, or have you finally realized what a terrible person he is? Both. Now, that really surprises me. Do you think I'm incapable of learning from my mistakes? 
No, but Justin really did a number on you, Iris. And with Ashley always singing his praises, I wasn't sure whether you'd ever come to your senses about him. I have. You realize that this is going to put a strain on your relationship with Ashley. You let me worry about that. Okay. I know you feel that Justin is responsible for Max's death. He is, darling. I felt the same way about Ryan. There's a difference. You were wrong about Ryan. I'm right about Justin. But when I felt the way I did, I didn't know that Ryan wasn't responsible. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind about Justin. Max had proof. Justin may be indirectly responsible. That's true. But to spend the rest of your life seeking revenge against him, that's wrong. It's not going to take the rest of my life, Iris. Maybe three, four months at the most. Really? It will only destroy you. I can't allow that to happen. Iris, my mother gives me that lecture at least once a day. It's time you started believing it. You have to understand that Max was the most important thing in my life to me. I loved him. I wanted to have his children and... and I wanted to grow old with him. Justin took all those years away from me. I understand your pain. And your loss. But revenge against Justin won't lessen the pain. You have wonderful parents and friends who love you. I can't let him win. I just can't do it. In the long run, he won't win. But you lose. You lose everyone you love. Look what happened to me. Is that what you want for yourself? Is revenge against Justin really that important to you, Rena? I'm telling you, it's not worth it. Give up. Please, before you destroy yourself. Hi. How's your son? Oh, he's fine. I just gave him his bottle, so he'll be sleeping for a while. Oh, good. Where's Paige? Uh, she had to uh, go talk to someone. Hi. Paige told me that uh, you and Billy Joe have just recently gotten a divorce. Yes, we have. I'm sorry to hear about that. Paige seems to like both you and Billy Joe. You know, Mr. Carrington, I still care about him. But sometimes two people who care about each other have to separate for everybody's good. And I guess this is just one of those times. I know how difficult that can be. So does Paige. I suppose you know that she and my son Dennis have recently come through a difficult divorce themselves. Yeah, I know. Does she and Dennis, do they ever see each other anymore? Oh, not very often. They run into each other occasionally, but Dennis is still very uncomfortable around Paige. Do you think he's ever going to get over that? Well, I thought so in the beginning, but now I begin to wonder. I don't think Billy Joe isn't very comfortable around me either. But how about you? You've been divorced from Mrs. Wheeler. How do you feel around her now? Oh, I don't have any problem being around Iris now. Billy Joe won't even see me now. I keep thinking he's going to get over it, but... It doesn't look like he is. Maybe they weren't here. We don't know for sure. It'd be a phone from here. Someone's been here, though. How do you know? There's milk in the refrigerator. 
Well, does anybody else have keys to the place? Uh, just the family, as far as I know. So Justin and Paige could have been here this weekend, right? Maybe. Why don't you call Justin and ask him if he's the one that had the phone service turned on? Okay, I think I'm going to drive around and see if anybody's seen someone around here. Well, honey, the cabins are pretty far apart. Yeah, but if anybody was out of the lake, they would have been easily spotted. Maybe. It's not much to go on, but it's worth a try. You want to stay here or you want to come with me? I remember when I brought Steve up here last summer for a week. We had such a good time. Ryan! What? Steve's been here! Huh? These are his basketball and track medals. You sure? I'm positive he took him to camp with him and he took him on that camping trip with Buddy and Buddy Jr. Are you sure these weren't kept here from last summer? No, no. I think that he's coming back. Steve wouldn't have just gone and left these medals here. I'll be back. What's wrong with the car? Not sure. Why did we have to leave in such a hurry? I wanted to go swimming. You can swim later. Where are we going? Stop asking so many questions. Are we going back to the cabin? No. I liked it there. Mom took me there last summer. You told me. We had a real neat time. Mom decided to take me out in the motorboat. And guess what? We ran out of gas. That's typical of your mother, not planning ahead. Not having any gasoline for the boat. I was responsible for that. It wasn't Mom's fault. But she was real cool about it. Why don't you wait in the car? It's hot out here. I want to know where we're going. I haven't decided yet. What are you so mad about? I'm mad at you, son. It's uh, the car, the inconvenience. Why don't you wait in the shade, okay? Well, I just had to keep busy. I didn't know what else to do with myself. Did Jenny or Ryan call yet? Jenny just called. Did they find Steve? She said that Steve and Barrett were at the cabin. But they've gone. Ryan has gone out, walking around in the neighborhood to see if he could find anyone who saw or talked to them. I'm so sorry about all this. Poor Jenny. Just when she was so happy. I don't think Steve will be able to stay away from her for very long. Well, Barrett may not allow him to get in touch with her. Steve loves Jenny so much. He'll find a way. Besides, he told me that he promised Rena he'd take care of her after Max died. So I don't think he'll be able to stay away from her for very long either. I hope not. <laughs> Are you coming along with your job hunting? Not very good. I'm beginning to wonder whether I ought to go into Houston and look for something. Well, now, Vicki Bellman told me she'd give you a job at KVIK. I know. But I hate the thought of living in the city, the way my grandfather's been acting lately. Is he back in jail? Yes. Well, what happened this time? Well, he we went to the AA group once, and things were going pretty well. But then he stopped by the dew drop in. And that was it. You know, honey, you should talk to Ryan about taking over for your grandfather. What do you mean, taking over? Well, I mean having the property put in your name. Now, your, father, your grandfather isn't responsible enough to take care of it, to pay the taxes and all that. I've been doing that. I've, I've been doing that for a couple of years now. Well, but you need to have the legal part of it taken care of before he can do anything foolish. I don't think he'd ever do anything like that. Well, will you talk to Ryan anyway? Okay. As soon as, as Ryan and Jenny find Stephen things settle down, I'll talk to him. Fine. <sighs> Miss Kate, you do think they're going to find Steve, don't you? Yes. I'm sure they will.
Tony, did you find anyone who saw Steve or Barrett? Yeah, a man saw them fishing this morning. Uh, a woman who lives two cabins down, drove by earlier, and saw them putting suitcases in the car. Mrs. Sullivan? That's right. She stopped her car, honked the horn, because she hadn't seen Barrett in a long time. She wanted to talk to him. Uh, he just ignored her. I still think they're coming back here. Because of Steve's medals? Honey, look, if Barrett was in a hurry, uh, Steve probably just forgot the medals. But once Steve realized that he'd forgotten him, he'd make Barrett come back here. But who knows where they're going to be? And from the way he snubbed Mrs. Sullivan, uh, I just don't think he's going to be coming back. Honey, Barrett couldn't do that to Steve, and those medals were too precious to him. Do you want to stay here and wait for them? I don't know what I want to do. If they're leaving town, maybe... Maybe we should go back to the rent car place and honey, wait for honey, them Honey, 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 we don't know that they are leaving town. Oh, Brian. No, 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 I know what we can do. I'm going to ask Mrs. Sullivan to be a lookout so that Barrett and Steve, too, come back here. Well, she can just call us. Or if they go to the rent -a car place, Mrs. Keir or Mr. Craig can call us, all right? All right. I think we should take the medals with us? Absolutely. What if Steve comes back, finds the medals are gone, he'll think someone stole them? Just leave them a note, all right? Okay. That's a good idea. Let me see if I can find some paper. Okay. George, the dump coming. Oh, sorry, Christine. Uh, just a minute. I'll have to ask her. Mrs. Carrington is here to see you. You may go now. Well, I haven't seen you for a while. You mean since you fired me from the top of the World Club for the second time and threw me out of Alex's suite? You told me then you were leaving Houston. I changed my mind. If you were ever really planning to leave. Are you really so unhappy about my staying in Houston that you'd do anything to get rid of me, Iris? I beg your pardon? I asked you a simple, direct question in English. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, don't you? I said I didn't. I'm talking about the pictures you slipped under my door. What pictures? All right, Iris. Since you insist on playing games, I guess I'm going to have to spell it out for you. I'm talking about the publicity stills from the movie that I made from Chris. You remember the little pictures he showed you? What about them? Only three people in Houston know about that film, other than Dennis and me. One is in jail, one is dead, and that only leaves you. I still don't know what you're talking about. Someone slipped those pictures under the door of the boutique I'm opening at the Galleria. Someone is trying to use those pictures against me. And I think that that someone is you. You coming in town with me today? Well, I sure will if you want me to. I'd like your company. Your support. You got it. I wish I knew what to expect at that board meeting, Ashley. Oh, sweetheart, I've already told you. They're going to vote in a new president, and you're going to run the production division. You sure? Well, I think that's the worst that can happen. And well, what's the best? Well, our sweetheart could appoint you to the board. I doubt that. Well, you never know. Anyway, she might do it later on. After all, this furor with Wine Connor, you know, dies down. I have uh, prepared a little speech to make before the members of the board. What kind of speech? I wanted to explain to them why I accused Ryan Connor of misappropriating funds from World War. Um, I don't know that that's such a great idea. Actually, I have to make my position clear. Otherwise, they'll just accuse me of all sorts of, of motives, like railroading Ryan Connor out of World Oil so that I could become president. Who do you think would be a good president? I really don't know. Iris didn't give me any indication, didn't volunteer anything, and I didn't think it was my place to ask. Uh, it's probably that Davenport guy. Why him? Well, he's been around for a long time. He's a company man. I think that that's the image that the company wants to present now. Do you like him? Yeah. 
Yeah, as a matter of fact, I think he is is one of the officers on the board of directors that was very excited about the oil production division. Well, great. It sounds like he'd be a good man to be president then. I mean, he'd give you free reign, wouldn't he? Maybe. Well, look who's here. Hello, you two. What a nice domestic scene. How's the little mother? Well, as a matter of fact, Miss Rena, we were just on our way into town. If you'll excuse us. Excuse us. Bye-bye. If uh, you want to go up the stables and talk to Guy, watch the pie. Thank you. Did the workmen finish in the living room? Yes, they finished an hour ago. I'm glad to see them gone. Sure looks pretty, doesn't it? Mmm, I smell a Kate Marshall apple pie cooking. Oh, Rena. You trying to keep busy, honey? Yes, I have been. You know how I am about idle hands. Mm, the devil's <laughs> workshop, I yeah. think, is what you call it. I don't know if that's the right expression, but it's close enough. Hi, Rena. Hi, hey, honey. Would you like some coffee? Oh, have you talked to Ginny? Ah, uh, yes. She called me from the cabin by the lake. She and Ryan are on their way down here now. Oh, I'm glad. Mm-hmm. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I think the living room looks beautiful, and I love that new staircase. Well, it's not new. They just mm-hmm. sanded the wood and painted the walls a color. Oh, <laughs> don't you like it? It's all right. Now, how about some coffee, Lurleen? All right. Uh, can you stay a while? Yes. Do you want me to do something for you? No. Uh, Guy wants to see me. I won't be gone long. Okay. She's really upset about Steve. Yes, she is. I suppose having Justin here doesn't help much either. Well, he's been staying out of her way. How do you get along with him? Okay. Well, he, he was real nice to me when... when Bubba Wadsworth attacked you? Did Jenny tell you what happened? Jenny kept her promise, honey. I figured it out by myself. Don't you know that I was as worried about you as Jenny? Hmm? Jenny's really mad at me because I won't take Bubba to the sheriff. No, 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 no. She's not mad. She understands. I don't want everyone in the county to know. People aren't going to blame you. No one would dare say that you led Bubba on. Yes, they will. Jenny, Kate, and I don't think so, and neither does Justin. Everyone else will. Honey, people around here know what kind of person Bubba Wadsworth is. I don't want people looking at me and saying, there's the girl that Bubba tried to rape. I'd be so embarrassed and ashamed. He's the one who should be embarrassed and ashamed. He doesn't think he did anything wrong. Honey, if the sheriff was only able to arrest him, then... It wouldn't have done any good. I think you're wrong. No, I'm not. Besides, he's not going to bother me anymore. He knows that Miss Kate will shoot him if he tries anything. I'm sure of it. I can't believe that you really think I would resort to slipping pornographic photographs under someone's door. I think you're capable of anything. Oh, I won't deny I would like to see you leave Houston for good. I'm sure you would. But give me a little credit. If I set my heart on doing something, I'd make sure I did it in a more orthodox fashion than slipping photographs under your door. Oh, I give you plenty of credit, Iris. I'm certain that if you have a copy of those photos, you have a copy of the film, too, and I want to know what you intend on doing with it. I don't have the photographs or the film. I don't make a habit of bringing pornography into my home, and I would appreciate it if you wouldn't come forcing your way in here making accusations like that. I don't know what you're planning, Iris, but I'm not going to let you get away with it. I'm not planning anything, and I don't respond to threats. Now, I suggest you leave before I have you thrown out. Vivian, I'm warning you, Iris. If you're involved in this in any way... Show this woman to the door.
Did Mrs. Carrington find out about that party Dennis says he's going to throw to embarrass her? Not exactly. And I wish you wouldn't call her Mrs. Carrington. Paige and my son are divorced. That's still her legal name, isn't it? She upset you, didn't she? No, not really. It's Dennis who's upset me and that dreadful party of his. Is there any way to put this party off? How can you even ask that? I just wondered. I thought there was something we could do. Everyone is already invited. I mean, what would I say? You know it's impossible to cancel now. What are you going to do then? All I can do is try to get my hands on that... That what? Don't you think it's about time you told me the truth about this party, Mrs. Wheeler? Just what is it that Dennis is going to do that's going to embarrass Mrs. Carrington at this party? I can't discuss that with you. Why not? Because you'd be too shocked. Well, I'm going to be at the party, and if you don't get some help in stopping Dennis, we're all going to be shocked. You're right. You remember all the talk about the pornographic film that Paige made? The one Chris Shaw wanted you to give him a million dollars for? That's right. What about it? Dennis is planning to show that film at the party. Uh, we've got to stop him. You're the one who's going to give the party. How do you think you're going to live that down? I know we have to stop him. How? Somehow we have to find that film and put another one in its place. I understand my mother offered you a job at KVIK. T.J. Canfield put her up to that. T.J.? I was at Jenny's wedding reception, and the next thing I knew, T.J. had asked your mother to offer me a job. That's very interesting. Well, I thought it was really nice of him, don't you? Yes, it was. You don't like him very much, do you? Not all that much. He's really good looking. Yes, he's really good looking. Why don't you want to work at a television station? Oh, I, don't, I don't want to work in the city. I like it out here. Mm, I can understand that. Max felt the same way. I've been looking for a job out here in Marshall Village. Have you found something yet? No. If I don't find something soon, I may have to look for a job in Houston. Well, you hang in there, honey, as long as you can, because being happy is the most important thing. I know. But now that the well blew up, my granddaddy and I don't have much money coming in. I need a job. You know, Jenny and I think that you should go back to school. Now, we're willing to pay some of the expenses so that you... I have been through this with Jenny. I don't want to take her money or yours. I appreciate the offer. Okay, but if you change your mind, I'll be all right. Well, I gotta get back to the city. Aren't you gonna wait for Jimmy and Ryan? No, but I'll be coming back later. Hello, Kate. I'm so sorry you didn't find Steve and Barrett. Oh, we're gonna find them soon enough. At least we know now that they're still in Texas, right? You look so tired, Jenny. Why don't you sit down for a while? I'm okay. Where are Justin and Ashley? Well, I've gone into Houston for the World Oil Board meeting. Justin's going to the board meeting? Well, that's what he said. Are you surprised? I sure am. He knows he's going to get dumped as president. I would think the whole thing would embarrass him. I just hope Justin doesn't have some trick up his sleeve this time. Well, I don't think he's going to find any way to get out of this. You should be there, Ryan. After all, you still own one-third of the company. Well, I gave my proxy to TJ, so however he votes is just fine with me. Hello, everybody. Hi, Rena. Hello. Jenny, why don't we talk? I'm sorry. I think I'm okay, and then I burst into tears. I have to explain a single thing to you. What do you have in your hand there? Steve's track and basketball medals. Where'd you get them? At the lake cabin. I don't think I'm ever going to see my child again, Rena. Honey, don't say that because it's not true. You will see him. Well, even if I do, he doesn't think I want him now or love him anymore. 
Once you explain to him that his father is the one who tricked him into going away, I think you'll finally see what his father is really like, and he'll never want to have anything to do with him. Can't have him growing up hating his father. Maybe you can keep him from hating him, but you've got to keep Steve away from him. Oh, I wonder what kind of ideas Barrett's putting in Steve's head about me. Jenny, Steve loves you, honey. And he's a smart boy. It may take him a little while, but he'll find out what, what Barrett is up to eventually. I hope so. Listen, are you going to be all right for a while? Okay. I got to go back into town. What for? Oh, something I've wanted to do for a long time. I'll tell you all about it later. Oh. How are you doing, Vivian? My mother here? Uh, no, she went to the World Oil Building for a board meeting. She left already? Well, yeah. Aren't you supposed to be there, too? I just came by to see if she needed a lift. She and Mr. Wheeler went together. Well, in that case, I better get a move on. I don't want to be late. Dennis! I just want to talk to you a minute about your and Mrs. Wheeler throwing this party tonight for Mr. Carrington. Where's Dennis? Oh, he'll be here soon, I'm sure. Are you sure that you want to go through with this plan of making me chairman of the board of World Oil? You're Alex's brother. Yeah, but it doesn't necessarily follow that I become chairman of his company. I think Alex would have wanted it that way. But do you want it that way? I mean, after all, you and Dennis each own a third of the company. That's the controlling stock. I have great faith in you, Grant. You've been handling all my personal finances since Alex died. Well, I appreciate and that. And you've done an excellent job with the banks you own. At the moment, I think you are the person best suited for the job. With the exception of Ryan Connor. He's refused to come back to the company. I think he could still be persuaded to no. come. No, I'm afraid not. Anyway, I think things have worked out fairly well, all things considered. Something's bothering you. I'll be all right. Is it the meeting? No, no. Is it the party tonight? Why do you say that? Well, I know what a perfectionist you can be. I'm a little worried. With all the entertaining that you've done? Every party has its own problems. Well, I wouldn't worry about it. From what I've heard about all the preparations, I'm sure that Elliot's going to have a fine surprise. I wish the other people would get here so we could get started with this meeting. No, you have to get back to the station. I couldn't have gotten any work done knowing the state you were in. Did you see Iris? What did she say? She denied everything, of course. Did you tell her about the publicity stills? She said she knew nothing about them. Elliot, what am I going to do? Well, the first thing you're going to do is try not to be so upset. Someone has a copy of that film. I know it. No, you don't know that. And he's going to use it against me. Paige, don't get yourself worked up like this. Whoever slipped those photos under my door must have a copy of the film, too. It's not necessarily true. Don't forget that Chris Shaw was asking Iris for a million dollars for that film. What does that prove? Well, if there'd been other copies of the film floating around, I don't think his price would have been that high. And Chris Shaw's copy of the film is in the district attorney's possession. But how did he get the stills? I don't know. And why is he slipping it under the door? I can't answer that either. I don't have the answers, Paige. But I'm going to try to get them. How? I'll talk to someone in the film lab at KVIK and see where you could go to reproduce photographs of that kind or a movie. Do you really think that that would help? Well, they deal with all the film labs in Houston. If that doesn't turn up anything, then I'll, I'll think of something else. But we will work it out some way. Uh, Vivian, I have to get to that.
that board meeting? This isn't going to take very much of your time. I just wanted to talk to you about the preparations I've made for this party. So sit down a minute. Just, you know. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the party is an excellent hand. Now, Mrs. Wheeler tells me that this is a party to honor Mr. Carrington. That's right. But he doesn't know anything about it. No, 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 no. You see, Dad thinks that Vicky's taking Paige and him to dinner to honor him for the journalism award he won for the documentary he did. But the thing is, Dad doesn't know that anyone else is going to be there. Oh, but and Mrs. Wheeler says that you're going to show this documentary at the party. I am, yeah. Oh, I just think that's a wonderful idea. Well, I'm certainly glad you approved. So I was wondering, since I'm in charge of everything else, if you'd like me to be in charge of showing that documentary. Uh, well, that's nice of you to offer, but it's uh, already been taken care well, of. Well, it's no trouble to it's me. It's already I been love arranged, to do it. Vivian. Oh. Now, is there anything else? Mm -mm. Wait a minute. I want to talk to you about something else that's been on my mind, uh, and that is... What? I thought maybe you would need a housekeeper. A housekeeper? Yes, because ever since you and Paige and Mr. Car Mrs. Carrington were separated and everything, I've been very worried about you cleaning your own apartment. Well, I, I don't mind. It's not well, that big. I don't mind either, and I don't think it's something that a man should have to do. You're not a... Mel Chauvinist, are you? Well, I don't, I don't know what that means, but I've got some time right now. And what I was thinking, if you gave me the keys to your apartment, I could go right over there and get started on it while you were at that board meeting. Well, that's nice of you to offer, but uh, let me think about it. Right now, I don't think the apartment uh, needs any cleaning. But uh, uh, if Mom calls, look, just tell her that I'll be there as, as soon as I can, all right? Sorry, Mrs. Wheeler, I tried. I really did. TJ, how are you? Hey, fine, thanks. You know Iris Wheeler. Yes, we met at the last meeting. Are you voting Strikers proxy? The Strikers and Ryan Connors. Hello, Iris. Jimbo, it's nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Hello, Jimbo. Hello, excuse us. You look a little surprised to see me. No, you said you'd be here. Just keeping my part of the bargain. I'll vote with you today, and you'll throw one hell of a party tonight. Right? We're not Iris. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. <laughs> Gentlemen? Well, you don't think you're voting your daddy's proxy, do you? No, I'm not voting his proxy. Let's get seated, shall we? Get this meeting started. Will you sit over here, please? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello, Justin. Trina, what are you doing here? I'm announcing Rena's appointment as a director of World Oil. And I'm nominating her as the head of the oil production division to replace Mr. Marshall. Now, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I have other business to attend to. Grant will vote my proxy. Good day, Justin. Mm -hmm. 